everyone. Today I wanted to talk about medicines, bringing medicine into Japan. And one of the things that sparked this video was, as I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, there was recently a case where a woman was coming into Japan and she had Adderall. I believe that she had repackaged the uh, prescriptions into other bottles, like um, Tylenol bottles. But basically, uh, Adderall is very much illegal here in Japan. And what happened with her was that she was arrested and subsequently deported. And I really don't want that to happen to any of you. So here's a rundown about bringing medicine into Japan. So here are some of the medicines and drugs that are 100% not allowed. Heroin, cocaine, MDMA, opium, cannabis, stimulant drugs, including some prescription medications such as Adderall, and including some medications available over the counter in the US are prohibited in Japan. There are no exceptions in bringing these prohibited medications into Japan, even if the medication is legally obtained outside of Japan. Also, it is illegal to bring into Japan some over-the-counter medicines commonly used in the United States, including inhalers and some allergy and sinus medications. Specifically, products that contain stimulants, medicines that contain Sudafedrin, such as Actifed, Sudafed, and Vicks inhalers, or codeine, are prohibited. There are situations where meds are not completely banned, like Adderall, but they're still illegal without permission. So Adderall is definitely out, but some of them you might have a chance with. A doctor's note or a prescription, the script, will not suffice. What you would need to do in those cases is contact your embassy or consulate, and you may need to obtain a yakan shomei. This involves a bunch of forms that you're gonna have to fill out with your doctor, and it's kind of tedious, but worth it. And just to give you an idea about this, you know, my father visited Japan a few years ago and he had a very painful and rare form of cancer. So I'm sure that you can imagine that some of his medication would be a no-go here. And But uh, he got permission for all of it. Uh, he got the Yakan Shomei and he also got a special license for some of it as well. But also keep in mind that my parents were only visiting for a week and they weren't here long term. So if you want to be here longer, you may need to get special permission for your medication, even if it's not as serious as what my father had. If you don't get permission, you can't bring them here. That's it. There, there's no way around it. Um, perhaps there are alternative medications that you can try, and I hope that you will. If there's just no way that you can go without these medications uh, that aren't accepted into Japan, Unfortunately, you may have to reconsider your plans for coming into Japan, and that's a very hard decision to make. So you may need to make some changes uh, to your medications when coming to Japan, and that's okay. That's no big deal. We can work with that. There are some resources in the description box below. I'll leave those links for you where you can contact medical professionals in Japan and see uh, if there are some kind of alternatives or if your medication it will be available for you or you could take one of my consultations that I will talk about at the end of this video there usually are alternatives available for you so if you do a bit of research you can find medication that will suit your needs and possibly even work out better for you or cause less stress to your system my friend Kat is a youtuber here in Japan and a longtime resident and often has a travel agency caliber advice and information. And she says, the problem that I ran into was many posts online about how pseudoephedrine is illegal and therefore does not exist in Japan. However, this too would turn out to be misinformation. Although the actual product Sudafed is unavailable in Japan, there are other products which provide the same, if not better, results. After a great deal of research, I went with Pabron Ronitis Capsule S, which includes Sudafedrin as well as other active ingredients. So have a look at this side-by-side -side comparison of the Japanese medicine that Kat was referring to and Sudafed. The ingredients listed were found on their respective makers' websites. Note that Pabron Renitis Capsule S can be taken up to three times a day, so this would exceed the dosage of Sudafedrin found in Sudafed 12 hour. However, you can take two Sudafeds in a day. So they're not the same, but they're not really all that different. For diabetics and those with extreme allergies needing syringes or EpiPens, and those with CPAP machines, you'll need one of those Yakan Shomeis. 
So uh, there may be additional steps to go through uh, for your own country as well as other countries that you visit along the way. So for example, if you have a layover in South Korea, you need to make sure that you have all of the necessary forms and processing from, for that country and for your home country as well as Japan. So I would say get this process started as soon as possible along with your visa. So make sure that both of these, the visa and the Yakan Shomei, are finalized before you go. You can bring a one month supply of prescriptions with you and maybe more if you have a Yakan Shomei. So just a quick note on cosmetics and toiletries since they are closely related to bringing medicine. Uh, passengers may bring a maximum of 24 personal size pieces per type of cosmetic articles into Japan. So that means that you could bring a maximum of let's say 24 lipsticks even if they're different shades or brands or anything. Uh, so 24 is the magic number for each thing. In addition to all of this information, please refer to my previous video on questioning interrogations and deportation. So here are some tips on how to avoid trouble, and some of them are similar to ones that I mentioned in my previous video. Double check everything, all of the rules, make sure that all of your medication is good to go, and uh, ask people from your local embassy or consulate if you have any questions. This includes checking individual medications, so whether it's over-the-counter or prescription. So as I mentioned earlier, things like Sudafed and NyQuil are not allowed over here. It's best if you keep your over-the-counter medications sealed and in their original packaging. Don't ever repackage medicine. That's a paddling. So be honest about your medication, don't repack it, and you're gonna get in so much more trouble if, or rather, when they find out. When verifying everything, make sure to get everything in writing from prescriptions to uh, consulate names and contact numbers, everything. Uh, be super detailed about this. Uh, respect the laws and etiquette of other countries by doing your research beforehand. In addition to the extra documentation required for your medication, be sure to have the prescription on the bottles and uh, you know some kind of script uh, with it along with uh, keeping your passport on you and your residence card. And for more information, there are links in the description box below, so please check those out. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to let me know or take one of my consultation lessons on cafetalk.com. Uh, everything you tell me is confidential, so don't worry. And as a bonus tip, if you would like some lucky boxes from Japan full of goodies, please hit up my Patreon. I hope that you have a comfortable stay here in Japan with all of the medication that you might need. So please be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!